brought to you by RunToGold.com, the premier source for monetary science applied to geopolitical, international, and economic financial news and events. Welcome back to the 26th episode of the RunToGold.com podcast. I'm here with Ross Hillesheim, who works for Euro-Pacific Capital in Los Angeles. Euro-Pacific Capital is run by Peter Schiff, who you probably see quite a bit on the major news channels, and he's also an Austrian economist. So, Ross, can you tell us a little bit about Euro-Pacific strategy? Well, Euro-Pacific Capital is all about being diversified internationally. It's also about um, being diversified in gold and silver through the Perth Mint. One of the things that we believe is that with the uh, problems right now in the economy that the dollar and some of the things going on in the U.S. financially is, uh, is deteriorating and we need to get our, our clients into international businesses. And from what I understand, you focus mainly on uh, dividend-paying stocks? Yes. Things like that. And what exactly is the, the importance of gold in Europac's strategy? Well, a lot of people come to Euro Pacific Capital to preserve their capital and preserve their purchasing power. And personally, I feel like gold is one of the best ways, if not the best way, to preserve your capital for the long run. And I know Peter Schiff feels the exact same way. So what we try to do is we get people involved with gold through the Perth Mint, and um, the gold is stored in, in Western Australia. And then from there, if people want some stocks that pay high dividends, then we can get them into other countries that do that. Yeah, I think it's very important to have gold. Uh, the recent article on the Armenian currency, poofing. Right. <laughs> we, we, we've, seen, we've seen a lot of currencies poof lately. The, the Kazakhstan ting is poofed. The Armenian dom has now poofed. The British pound is in the process of yeah, poofing. Yeah, you were just saying that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about the British pound uh, and how it's probably going to continue facing intense pressure, especially with the Bank of England engaging in its quantitative easing. So, yeah, it's very important, I think, to have some physical gold bullion in one's uh, portfolio. Are there any other things that you'd like to, to mention for the listeners? Yeah, well, uh, thanks for bringing me on the podcast. This is exciting. I um, One of the reasons that I work for Euro Pacific Capital is because I... Uh, I believe in the the overall strategy of Euro Pacific and uh, and Peter Schiff. My previous employer, it, it seemed like we weren't, weren't we weren't helping people to preserve their capital and get them diversified into gold, physical gold, or into other exchanges around the world. Well, it was like uh, gold's the kryptonite to your former employer. <laughs> oh, right. They they had no. They did not want to hear about that at all. I actually we uh, it's kind of funny some of our. We, we we actually had a private banker with your your former employer, and it was quite funny. We were we were with the private wealth management group. You know, they bring in like two CFPs and and two lawyers and CPA or whatever to help us. You know, they're they're going to tell us how we should <laughs> manage our money, right? <laughs> and uh, it was real funny because we took we 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 listened to their spiel and then. Uh, this was clear back. This was a couple of years ago. We we listened to their spiel and and we didn't we didn't give them any money. We actually wired it uh, wired quite a bit of money out of the country to purchase physical bullion with gold money. Wow. <laughs> and and my dad he the the banker he he uh, my dad says he hasn't he hasn't brought it up. <laughs> 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 but I remember sitting there with, uh, you know, we, we were we were discussing with them, and I, I remember asking one of them what the risk-free rate was, and of course he said the United States Treasury bill, and it just, you know, it just shows how that's the way they think. How they think they yeah. they don't view gold as money, they don't view it as cash, they don't view it as the risk-free allocation of capital, and. Uh, and I got the same the same spiel from a uh, from a private wealth management guy from Goldman Sachs, and yeah, we we're we we're having dinner up in a university club top of a skyscraper back back east, and <laughs> he 
he, I asked him the same question, and he said, oh, yeah, Treasuryville. So <laughs> it's good to see that Europac doesn't, uh, doesn't hold that fundamentally flawed premise in their investing strategy. You're right. And I also – one of the great things I like about Euro-Pacific and Peter Schiff is they don't seem to limit themselves to being involved in other – um, other markets and gold. I mean, there are my previous employer. They, were, they wouldn't even think about gold, even <laughs> if it was a great investment. It made sense one hundred percent. It wasn't even an option. Like they were limiting themselves. I don't feel like Euro Pacific's not that way at all. Yeah, limiting themselves to mutual funds, it's, right? Because uh, I mean, just for you listeners, Ross has been a longtime reader and personal friend, and uh, we, we've we've had lunch together many times and and stuff like that, and so. Uh, I, was, I was in town where he's at, and we decided to, to have a little chat for the podcast for the listeners and stuff. So anyways, that's a little bit of our background. And Europac's not paying any advertising or anything like that for this, although it would be kind of nice. Maybe you can mention it. Yeah, it would be nice <laughs> get, to have get, some people call up. Get, get Peter uh, <laughs> send some advertising money <laughs> my way. That would be nice. But uh, but actually, I followed, I followed Europac for a while, and especially Peter Schiff and uh, he's he's a he's got a good Austrian viewpoint and analysis of the current market. So it's which is which is rare in among uh, money managers, <laughs> and especially the mainstream money managers, which he is becoming a little bit more because you see him on CNBC and Bloomberg and doing television interviews. Well, yeah, I mean it, it's really <laughs> hard when you've got a video on YouTube. You know, the Peter Schiff was right video on YouTube. Uh, over a million views, you can't discount that. You can't say, oh, no one saw this coming. No yeah. one was talking about it. He was talking Actually, about it. Was. <laughs> Actually, uh, there are a lot of people talking about it, a lot of people saying this is going to happen. And, uh, you know, uh, us Austrian economists, we we've, we saw this storm when it was miles offshore, when it was years away. So, I mean, this is – what's happening is, is just a natural and a predictable consequence of basic economic law. And if you know and understand those laws and how they're operating, then you're able to at least not be running around like a chicken with its head cut off, like probably your, your, your former employer. A lot of people there, they're either like that or they're like the ostrich just sticking their head in the sand <laughs> – uh, well, it'll come back. Waiting it always does. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, yeah, it's very very interesting. Anyways, any any last words before we cut this off? No, I uh, appreciate it. This has been fun. Okay. I yeah. Look forward to your podcast <laughs> and reading your article. Yeah, it'll be fun. We'll have to do it again. Uh, For sure. Okay. Thanks, Ross. You've been listening to the 26th episode of the Run to Gold dot com podcast. Talk to you later. You've been listening to the RunToGold.com podcast, the premier source for applied monetary science on the web.